the National Commission on Disabilities, which is an autonomous agency of government, has a mandate to monitor, supervise, and ensure that the rights and well-being of persons with disabilities are adhered to in Liberia. We are also working in collaboration with the National Human Rights Action Plan Committee that has organized this program in order for us to validate or for us to be able to look through the report on the implementation of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. This uh, report has been long overdue. Since 2012, Liberia has signed and ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and has, been, has not been able to make her first report in connection with the time frame. However, with the support of our international uh, partners, which we want to recognize in this uh, particular meeting, the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights, the UN Women, that had jump started the, process, the whole process. We also want to recognize UNDP, that so have been so far cited in working with us in developing a five years a national action plan for the full implementation of this convention in Liberia. We also want to work, uh, recognize the Swedish Embassy, also again in respect to supporting and protecting the rights of persons with disabilities in Liberia. What we want to say to all of us as participants today, we have a cross-section of persons that are in this hall. So you have persons with disabilities themselves who want to see what the government has written in regards to the implementation of this report of the convention. We have government ministries and agencies that have been along with us during the line from different sectors that are also a part of it. We also have the civil society that is also monitoring and looking forward to see the kind of report that Liberia will be sending out for the first time. And so we want to use this time to say you are all welcome. Feel free to this program. We look forward to all of your inputs into this document as this is the final work, which is we are validating the, uh, the report and we want to ensure that Liberia can send out her best, not just her best, but the realities that are on the ground. We are not going to be formulating things that are not happening. We are not going to be sending out any report to make the government look fine. But whatever the government has been able to achieve is what we will send. And the challenges that our government is faced with, we are going to make sure that the international community are aware so that they can also come on board and assist our government. So we want to use this time to say thank you, feel free, and you are welcome. Today is a very important day for OICHR. It's a very important day for the government of Liberia. On July 2012, Liberia ratified the Convention on the Rights of the People with Disabilities. And from that moment, the government made a formal commitment to protect the rights of all the people living with disabilities in Liberia. This is an opportunity for the government to really showcase internationally what they have done to implement that convention. But today, we also have a very important opportunity for all the people living with disabilities in Liberia to really help us know what the impact of those, uh, of, the, of those laws and policies that the government of Liberia has put in place has had on the ground. As you will see in the introduction of the, of the report, one of the major challenges we are facing at the moment is the complete lack of data on the people living with disabilities. Data is important because it will help us to really understand the needs and rights of the people living with disabilities and the real impact that the laws and policies that are put in place has had. Without this data, it's very difficult to show what has been improving and what needs to continue to be improving. So today, we really make a call for you to show us, to let us know what the real impact of those laws and policies has been. Uh, 
OECHR has been supporting this process uh, a little bit from the side, but from now on, we are going to be actively involved with you drafting this final part of the, of, of the report. And we really hope that this will be an opportunity to bring alive the voices of all of the ones who are here. So thank you very much for having us here, and we are very much looking forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me also acknowledge the role of the uh, NCD in this process, and we are glad that today you could uh, bring together stakeholders to be able to discuss the draft um, report on Liberia. We think it's an opportunity to have a frank dialogue with the government, as you said, and most especially to ensure that what comes out of this process is a representation of the happenings in Liberia. It's also an opportunity for you, stakeholders, to make appropriate recommendations where right necessary to ensure that the situation uh, affecting the persons living with disability in Liberia are improved. On the part of UNDP, we have remained um, in this process, as you are aware. We supported uh, the National Union on Persons with Disability um, to hold real consultations around the country. We were there doing the rectification of this process. We supported the government of Liberia through the National Union on Persons with Disability and the National Commission on Disability to ensure that the convention was rectified. And we are also aware that last year we supported the National Union on Persons with Disability and the National Commission on Disability to draft a national action plan, which actually sort of gave the roadmap and so key things that can be done over a period of time to ensure that the lives of persons with disability is, to, is actually improved. Having said that, I like to close here by saying I wish you a fruitful deliberation and I hope that recommendations coming out of here can form a part of the final report. Since this is, um, when I saw validation, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe it's already over. But listening to the remarks from the Office of the High Commission, there's still an opportunity for you to actually make inputs, make recommendations to ensure that whatever comes out remains a representation of the situation in Liberia. I thank you very much and wish you a fruitful deliberation. Uh, I'm passionate about questions with disability. I think over time I've been interacting from a compassionate perspective. When our mother got amputated at GFK, I realized that we move now from being sympathetic to demanding rights. And that's where I'm coming from, that uh, the people who are living with disabilities should not live at the mercies and sympathies of Google gamers. Our government should take it seriously not just signing up to this convention, but making sure that we translate signing into actualities. And uh, from the INC, what we will demand across this country is that persons with disability are given appropriate opportunities. A few months ago, I was in Grand Peru County, and the chief education officer said, uh, people with disability, especially the grandfather, will never go to school in that county. And these are realities that we need to face, and that's why the ICHR will join, and always will join, and not just uh, a prison that will validate the, but demand the rights of persons with disability. On that note, I want to say that we are with you in this boat. Like I began saying, we come just from mere perception of being compassionate to being advocate for demanding the rights of persons with disability. Thank you. Government official. Head of UN agencies here present, head of diplomatic nations here, national institutions, non governmental organizations, the National Civil Society Council of Liberia, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I bring you warm greetings from the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency, Ambassador Dr. George Manuia, and the government and people of Liberia. 
to the mass and important milestone in our endeavor to advance the human rights of all members of our society, especially persons with disabilities. We have gathered to validate Liberia's first report to honor the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, consistent with Article 35 of the Convention, which obligates each state party to submit to the committee through the Secretary General of the United Nations a comprehensive report on measures taken to give effect to its obligations under the present Convention and on the progress made in regarding. Within two years after the entry into force of the present convention for the state party concern, I wish to note that Liberia, seven years later, can finally affirm her commitment to the implementation of this article with the finalization of this important document we are about to validate. This document is a vital tool which we as a government and people, together with you, our partners, can use to improve and safeguard the enjoyment of human rights of persons living with disabilities. Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, our development partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm also pleased to inform you that this report also demonstrates the government commitment to implement penalty of the proposed revised National Human Rights Action Plan for fulfilling Liberia's treaty reporting obligations currently being drafted by a technical team commissioned by the steering committee of the National Human Rights Action Plan, which is chaired by the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities is the most important international human rights document ever drafted and ratified on behalf of persons with disabilities because it, amongst other things, prohibits discrimination based on disability. It guarantees equal opportunity for individuals with disabilities in public accommodation, employment, transportation, state and local government services, as well as telecommunications. On behalf of the steering committee of the National Human Rights Action Plan, I would like to thank the Human Rights Protection Division of the Ministry of Justice for coordinating the drafting process. I am also appreciative of the professional work done by the drafting team, which has needed this document, which particularly reflects the actual human rights situation of persons with disabilities in Liberia. A special thanks goes to you heads of government ministries and agencies for supporting the steering committee and making your contribution to the drafting process. We also wish to recognize the important role you, our partners, both local and national, have played and continue to play in promoting in the promotion of the rights of persons with disabilities in Liberia to name a few, the Carter Center Mental Health Program, Association of Italian Room Florency, AFO, Side Saver International, the Lions Club in Liberia, etc. <coughs> we also like to commend the Honorable Ricardo Padio Denis, Executive Director of the National Commission of Disabilities for commitment to ensuring that the rights of disabled people are mainstream in government institutions. Finally, this document revealed to the government of Liberia, international partners, and civil society organizations the following important facts, which we are on the belief are very important for planning and programming activities to address human rights issues of persons with disabilities in Liberia. One that will not update and precise or accurate statistics on persons living with disabilities, which makes it nearly impossible to plan and budget for interventions on disabled issues. We also gather from this report that families of persons with disabilities have difficulties in improving their lives, chances, and are limited by a above average rate of literacy on employment and underemployment and below average occupation mobility coupled with the lack of access to information and resources and the social marginalizations of persons with disabilities 
reflect the social, cultural, and economic barriers against them. I would therefore call for a stronger collaboration between the ministry agencies of government, local and international non-governmental organizations, and our development partners to work towards the improvement of the well-being and dignity of persons with disabilities. I thank you. This is a brief overview of what you, you, know, you want to see in the program or the report that we want to, to validate today. So what we want to do is that we, we want to be very brief on the overview so that you can have an insight on the activities that we want to talk that have led us to where we are today. There are a series of activities that we want to talk before we decided to have the validation today. For example, we had a series of meetings, technical meetings were held, uh, several uh, workshops were held. So we want to inform you about those uh, meetings and uh, activities that took place before we go to where we are. So please. Okay, so. Uh, to, to, uh, to start off, we have the historicity of the convention, which of course, we don't want to read. You can just go through it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so sorry, we, uh, we understand some are officially prepared, so uh, we will have to read. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So. Uh, The historicity starts like this. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and its optional protocol A-RES-61-106 was adopted on 13 December 2006 at the United Nations headquarters in New York and was opened for signature on 30 March 2007. There were 82 signatories to the convention, 44 signatories to the optional protocol and one ratification of the convention. This is the highest number of signatories in history for a UN Convention on its opening day. It is the first comprehensive human rights treaty of the 21st century and is the first human rights convention to be opened for signature by regional integration organizations. The convention entered into force on 3 May 2008. So you see, what a coincidence. Today is the 10th of May 2019. <laughs> The convention follows decades of work by the UN to change attitudes and approaches to persons with disabilities, to persons with disabilities. It takes to a new height the movement from viewing persons with disabilities as objects of charity, medical treatment, and social protection towards viewing persons with disabilities as subjects with rights who are capable of claiming those rights and making decisions for their lives based on their free and informed consent as well as being active members of society. The convention is intended as a human rights instrument with an explicit social development dimension. It adopts a broad categorization of persons with disabilities and reaffirms that all persons with all types of disabilities must enjoy all human rights and fundamental freedoms. It clarifies and qualifies how all categories of rights apply to persons with disabilities and identifies areas where adaptations have been made for persons with disabilities to effectively exercise their rights to and areas where their rights are being violated and where protection of rights must be reinforced. The convention was negotiated during eight sessions of an ad hoc committee of the General Assembly from 2002 to 2006, making it the fastest negotiated human rights treaty. The importance and implication for ratification of the CRPD. The Government of Liberia Human Rights Initiative to succeed in, any, in anything, one has to sit and count the cost then strategize on ways and means to achieve the goal. The government of Liberia initiated the steering committee of the National Human Rights Action Plan in accordance with the 1993 Vienna Declaration of Program for Action. 
which contains all UN member states to draw up plan of action that will address human rights issues in their respective countries. As to the measure adopted to prevent abandonment, neglect, and institutionalization of children with disabilities, the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection was established by an act of national legislature in 2014 with the mandate to protect the development, empowerment, and protection of women, girls, and children, as well as the well-being and integration of persons with disabilities, the vulnerable, extremely poor, excluded, and disadvantaged. The Children's Law Article 7, Section 4.1, Dash 4.4 address these concerns. The Children Protection Network is also an administrative framework that advocates and protects the rights of persons with disabilities from neglect, abandonment, and others. 34. 34 says efforts to carry out and monitor deinstitutionalization and initiatives and ensure that children with disabilities receive appropriate support and care within their community. The Ministry of Gender at a minimum skill has established a guidelines and initiated a process of encouraging parents of children with disabilities to let their children grow up in family settings. Social workers are assigned in various communities to monitor the level of care being provided for these children. The Independent Accreditation Committee was set up to accreditate, monitor institutions, access, and where necessary, close all child welfare institutions that are not providing services for vulnerable children, including children with disabilities. So community-based programs and services provided by the public and private sectors. 37, measures adopted to ensure that the principle of the best interest of the child is integrated in the design, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of legislation and policies concerning children with disabilities. The Liberian Education Reform Law 2011 prohibits academic institutions Take the, le the legal from the discriminatory against us in harmony with one of the objectives under the agenda of for transformation. Ensure equitable access to free basic education for all children and youth, including girls and the disabled. With improved outcomes. MOE, okay, I think this should be omitted. Okay, so now we're going to tell it. Okay. Tell it eight says. Measures adopted to ensure that children with disabilities can freely express their views on all matters affecting them, that their views are given due weight in accordance with their age and maturity, on an equal basis with other children, as well as age and disability appropriate measures to support them in this regard. Article 8, Awareness Raising, starts with 40 measures including public awareness campaigns and strategies adopted to regularly raise awareness in society about the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities their capabilities and their contribution to society extent to which these strategies are grounded on the human rights based approach to disability, promote an image of persons with disabilities in line with the convention, and are implemented in accessible formats and languages. The government has undertaken and implemented a number of public sensitization and awareness programs at the national and community levels on the convention and its provision. Every year, December 3rd is celebrated as International Day of Persons with Disabilities, and October 15 is also celebrated as White King Safety Day with support from the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection is also involved in the awareness raising campaigns through their social workers, 
that are assigned in the 15 political subdivisions. In 2017, the ministry trained 15 general coordinators and 15 social welfare supervisors from, sorry there, from the 15 counties of Liberia. In, this, in the same year, the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection trained focal persons from all government line ministries and agencies in Montserrat County on the rights of persons with disability for the purpose of establishing disability debts at these institutions. In addition, the observance of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, the White King Safety Day, World Mental Health Day, and the World Abenacin Day, coupled with several ongoing consultations and discussions and examples of awareness raising activities. activities. Moreover, in 2018, the national team for the observance of the day of the African child was despite disabilities. Every child has exclusive rights to Liberia's development. These occasions are marked by celebrations yearly with marches through the principal streets of Monrovia and other counties with wide media publicity, indoor programs, and nationwide conferences. Several trainings and workshops on the rights of persons with disabilities are also held in different parts of the country as part of these celebrations. 41. Extent to which carried out by the private sector, including privately run media, promote perceptions of persons with disabilities that are fully respectful of their rights and dignity. We said the Liberian government's efforts have been complemented by international partners, namely Eneca International, the Site Savers International, the Carter Center, Medical Health Program, Mental Health Program, the Association, oh, okay, let me just say AIFO, because it's in Italian, please, Lions Club in Liberia, United Nations Mission, in Liberia is Human Rights Protection Section and Awareness Raising Activities in, in the country. For example, in 2016, the Steering Committee on the National Human Rights Action Plan with support from uh, all main Human Rights and Protection Section printed stickers to publicize the rights of persons with disabilities. The Child Protection Network also developed passages to address the protection of the children with disabilities from abuse. And when you talk about uh, accessibility of Article 9, yes. and that issues I really want for you people to really work on that. Because from Grand Master County, we have only uh, one artist community college. And since I graduated from uh, the, the high school 2015 2016, the college denied me because of the same uh, accessibility. I told them to build a ramp, but they refused because of their disability. I want the media and I went to the university also and they refused. So please, that is really effective on Please. So, uh, thank you. The Constitution of the Republic of Liberia and Statutory Laws of Liberia says all persons living within the territorial borders of Liberia without discrimination have equal recognition before the law and are entitled to equal protection of the law. This protection is available to PWDs. A number of human rights organizations in the countries do routinely provide advice and legal services to PWDs on pro pro basis to ensure the protection of the rights and defensible interests. Pro bono. Mm -hmm. pro, bono. pro bono. Yeah, pro bono. Oh, thank you. I say the pro bono. Pro bono. Pro bono. I know. The Liberian National Bar Association, in collaboration with the American Bar Association, is providing pro bono services through legal aid clinics where party litigants seek justice, while the Association of Female Lawyers provide legal aid. 66. Legal measures adopted to explicitly recognize the full legal capacity of persons with disabilities on equal basis with others and to repeal legislation which directly or indirectly restricts the full legal capacity of persons with disabilities on the basis of actual or pre preconceived impairment. Or perceived impairment, sorry. So we said here, um, as to legal capacity consistent with the constitutional provision, chapter three, article 11 of the constitution, 
It states, all persons are equal before the law and are therefore entitled to the equal protection of the law. Provides for the equal protection of all residing within the territorial borders of Liberia without discrimination. 67. Steps taken by the state party to ensure that persons with disabilities enjoy legal capacity on equal basis with others in all aspects of life. In particular, measures to ensure the equal and effective access to justice at all stages of legal proceedings by all persons with disabilities and the effective access to alternative dispute resolution and restorative justice. Information on whether such measures include the development of a national action plan of access to justice. Significant progress has been made to ensure access to justice in Liberia. Police stations, second and magistrate courts have been established in each of the 15 political subdivisions in the country to ensure that the rights are protected and were involved. Measures adopted to ensure that all persons with disabilities have access to legal assistance on an equal basis with others. To enhance access to justice and to avoid delays in trials, the government has put in place a number of initiatives over the years. Specialized courts have been established to deal with cases of rape, sexual abuse, and human trafficking, violent crimes, violent crimes such as armed robbery, felonies such as commercial transactions. These initiatives do not discriminate against but are available to all persons, including fidelities. To facilitate access to all, the judiciary has put in place a public defenders program with lawyers who routinely provide pro bono services to fidelities to persons who cannot afford to hire lawyers to protect their rights and defensible interests within the justice system. The Association of Female Lawyers provide advice and legal services to women and girls to ensure access to justice and protection of their rights and defensible interests. In addition, the Liberian National Bar Association and several NGOs, including human rights organizations, routinely provide advice and legal aid to persons in an effort to ensure access to justice. 73. Measures to ensure the availability of procedural and age-appropriate accommodation throughout legal proceedings to ensure the effective participation of all persons with disabilities in the justice system. Whatever the role they find themselves in, for example, as complainants, respondents, witness or member of jury, parties to legal action and defendants. We said, notwithstanding, the PWD faced numerous barriers, in numerous barriers to the enjoyment of this right, including information and communication barriers, inaccessibility to court facilities, limited judiciary capacity to deal with disabled specific legal needs, as well as the absence, absence of a national policy and action plan to access of access to justice of PWDs. Due to negative perceptions, religious beliefs and cultural practices coupled with lack of education in some areas, PWDs have suffered torture, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Families sometimes take their relatives who are mentally ill to healing centers and in the process some are chained while the legs of children with club foot were placed in mortar and pounded with the aim to straighten their legs. To address these vices, Article 21, E, says no person inclusive of PWD shall be subject to torture or inhumane treatment. The Ministry of Justice, Human Rights Division, in line with this mandate, conducts regular monetary exercises to ensure compliance with human rights standards and prevent the occurrence of torture in these facilities. In addition, the Liberian National Police has its own standard operating procedure in investigations and the punishment thereafter. There is also a strong coordination between the LNP and the Mental Health Division of the Ministry of Health, which allows for the police to serve as first responders. Um, Foot. Yes. Sorry, just, just to clarify. Yeah. Uh, whenever. Whenever there is a violation of human rights, you yeah. must be committed, like, 
the, the person who can commit that violation is a is a member, someone who is acting on behalf of the state. Okay. So the examples mm -hmm. that you are giving here are, I would suggest, needs to be moved to like security of the person. Okay. Uh, when we are talking about inhuman and degrading treatment, we are talking about treatment that is being given to a person with a disability within like any context, and this is carried out by a law, by a, a, a public, what is called a public operation, so any representative of the state. Okay. These are clear examples of exactly what you're saying, like ill treatment of people, yes. but it's, here the protection of the state would be for the integrity yes. of the person. Okay. So I think they need to be moved to Article 17. Okay. And then the rest is correct. Okay. Thank you so much. We said there are general measures put in place by the government. One, the Human Rights Division of Ministry of Justice to so monitor all prison facilities against torture and report from these monitoring. Reports from this monitoring are forwarded to the requisite authority for onward action against would-be perpetrators of torture. In addition, the LNP has its own standard operating procedures in investigating issues of torture and the punishment thereafter. I represent the civil society human rights advocacy platform and I think uh, for the years of the whole we participated in the workings of this report drafting and I think it was a great work and from the civil society angle we want to register uh, have a text to NCD and the disability community for the, at least giving us a working document for the first time. Well, just want to announce that whenever a treaty report is written, it also has to be accompanied by a shallow report. So we will again use this opportunity to work with the necessary stakeholders in civil society to start looking at the process that we need to draft in a shallow report, which again will put like work in good 14 when it comes to reporting. And it's also covered on our path and civil society to play the role while we are there checking on government we ourselves have to be responsible to ensure that uh, we do check and balance and when it comes to reporting please don't get me wrong it's about improving the situation so let not actors and people see reporting to be a wish home but i think incredible work from the human rights perspective we do reporting to improve the human rights situation on the ground and key to reporting on this matter, persons with disability, they are the most vulnerable people we found in Liberia. And they have, they have needs as compared to those physical and actively moving. You can imagine what the situation is like in Liberia. So we want to attach a great importance to this process to tell you that we have to do everything to help improve and protect the human rights of persons with disability in the world. So thank you. I think uh, we'll follow the discussion, but I just want to register it on behalf of the civil society community. Thank you so much. During the, <coughs> the, the, the government should actually look at some of these things, you know, inclusion. Um, the president spoke about inclusion, but it is, it is not taking implementation. He said, he said that you imply persons with disability up to now, you check in, in some of those agents and there is no one with disability. Some of us are qualified, that they have just graduated, graduated, but still we are not turning on the street with our document on our life. If only the government can, can come up with an assessment to see, to see how many persons with disability are qualified, then that would be a very good thing for this government when, when it talks about inclusion, everyone should be included in his government. So I'm appealing to President Ria to, to please look at, look at that. And also, if he's doing that, I mean, let, let his office, that President Ria's office, employ someone in his office with disability. Then, I mean, when you make a pronouncement, other agencies will charge some instruments. 
But as long as we are not giving an example, I mean, you will not actually work with God. If you say that, when you make a part of I mean, I have the time. Because if any, if any partner or international, uh, uh, if any partner comes in and want to support a sector, if there is no information on the issue of the start, then it makes it difficult for, for people to be able to come and put their funding in. Right now, I'm the principal of the Library School for the Blind, but there are hundreds of blind people, our kids, who are out there around the country I don't have access to the school in which I'm a principal for. How do I go there in the rural counties to collect those students or recruit them and bring them to the school? Even the issue of funding is a challenge. So if we can get partners or leaders and other government institutions to support the NCD or NUD to get the data, I just think that there will be partners or all of do must come in to help with some of the things that are crafted in the action plan. I, I think our brother can start me off. The social professor you are a village you call is director. And then she asked us to try to propose which are they that we could do a, I mean, a survey on possible disability in the building. I mean, a better proposal is similar to all. So I asked somebody to follow up. No, we have videos, all of them are available. They said they wanted they just to do this. That proposal is, I mean, I said, I've told her, I was sending her a copy. The people in front of her, it's a proposal prepared for the agents to do a disability survey. But really, that's not sensor. Every problem is to do a sensor. We also have indicators in the sensor. So we are still trying to see where we can get the police to the government to do the you know, work that is about this. So please. I think we also want to highlight this point because this is a very uh, essential issue that uh, you have raised uh, concerning the issue of data. It's not just about the number of persons who can have access to or the number of persons. I think when you listen to the last comments in relation to uh, exploitations, now we were we able to speak to our colleagues from the Liberal National Police the children. And um, Lena Ministries, especially when it comes to Ministry of Labor, our civil society, so to be specific, and uh, we have been having a series of meetings. And I can tell you, see children, children, children. And um, there are conventions where we have the argument states ongoing. And uh, the two other conventions, uh, 182 and 132, 138, and uh, talk about eliminations but from a child labor. And uh, in these documents, I think people with disability in the country are talking about children, all right? Prior to the working in community-based services. So our response to this is that refresher training for staff of 11 residential welfare institutions and one transit room are conducted by the Ministry of Gender on a regular basis. Our uh, police for general can see that, right? Hmm? So we leave, we leave out one, one, two. We got to Adigo 20. Adigo 20, personal mobility. Are we there? Yeah. As one, 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 three. Measures adopted including through public procurement to ensure that persons with disability have access to necessary personal mobility aids devices and other incentives technologies and form of living assistance and intermediaries that are affordable of acceptable quality based on universal design, responsive to individualized requirements and enhance the autonomy of the person with disability. One one tech team. So our response here is the MRC that is the Moral Rehabilitation Center, right? was established to provide mobility service. However, during the period 2020-15, international partners such as Handicap International, the Church of Christ, Jesus Christ and other saints, and the Christian Aid Ministry have provided support through the provision of wheelchairs to MRC for PWD in Liberia. 
The government of Liberia has not provided direct budgetary support to MRC for the provision of these services. In addition, the Labrador School of the Blind occasionally receives and provides attractive devices such as sunglasses, reading glasses, and other white canes for partners and the Labrador Revenue Agency, Labrador Revenue Authority. Is that what? Yes. <laughs> 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 We are law on 15. Measure adopted to give training to persons with disability, including children, and to specialize specialist staff or mobility skills. So 115, we see 115, sorry. 115, please. 115. Moral Rehabilitation Center provides how you call it? Orthopedic device, devices, as well as the Repressive trainings and counseling to increase mobility autonomy of PWD. In 2015 2016, the MRC conducted training for more than 30 PWDs from Morovia, Grand Bass, or G, Sino, Lofa, Nima counties, on the assembly and the usage of mobility devices. Are we there? Joining a global movement to advance a free press and freedom of expression. It is envisaged that PWD enjoy this provision of the Constitution on the equal basis of others, as pertaining to paragraph 119-118. However, as of the date of the reporting, the availability of information provided to the general public by the both government and private sector, including the mass media, is not readily accessible to PWDs in readable formats and technologies appropriate to the different kinds of impairments, right? Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, the government through the Ministry of Culture and Tourism is contemplating making available national platforms, such as the weekly press briefing and the new librarian newspaper and webpage to the National Commission on Disabilities to, to propagate the needs and aspirations of PWDs. How are we there? Yeah. May I interject? Yeah, interject. From the Ministry of Information, Cultural Affairs and Tourism, this includes information. Oh, okay. <coughs> information, please, we are. Okay. Good. Okay. So, 118, legislative and other measures adopted to ensure that information provided to the general public is also available to persons with disability in accessible format and technologies appropriate to different kinds of impairment in a timely manner with our additional costs. A substantive and enforceable right to inclusive education for all persons with disability, an explicit non-rejection clause for all schools and the right to be provided with reasonable accommodation. Measures adapted to ensure that effective remedies are in place in cases of exclusion for education on the basis of impairment. Now, this is the way we respond to this. Our response will say, Liberia has established a special inclusive education division in the Ministry of Education. The MOE, consistent with the agenda for transformation, developed its five years learning agenda, inclusive of the need for BWDs. Achieving this objective, a special and inclusive education division the Ministry of Education has developed a national inclusive education policy in collaboration with other line ministry and agency of government and relevant civil society organizations. Moreover, the German law states that every child with disability shall access and benefit from an inclusive education system, over education that is more responsive and supportive to the child's need and talent in a participatory, non discriminatory manner. However, voluntary allocation. To appropriately implement these activities remains a challenge. Intervention and treatments and alternative and initiative of health promotion, including general public health campaigns, acknowledge the requirement of and accessible for persons with disability in various formats and languages. Now this 159. Now 159 we answer here. Health promotion materials are 
readily available, but not in format the languages adapted for PWDs. Right? Is it clear? Yeah? Very clear. So you mean not there? Yeah. Not there. Not there. So 160. Budget allocation for improving accessibility of health services and facility as a percentage of general health budget disaggregated by rural and urban areas. So not, once I stay here, I respond is national budget does not allocate any specific lands to accessibility of health services for persons with disability. There are no budgetary land. So what's the one? See measures to ensure that health services Early identification interventions programs are available and appropriate to prevent and minimize the emergence of secondary disability, paying particular attention to children, women, and the elderly, including rural areas. One sister one, why medical practitioners may be able to detect early deformities. This is yet to be included, is yet to, to include, to be included into training curricula at nursing. Training Institute. Put all this aggregate data about sex, age, age, sex, and other relevant factors in order to identify and address the barriers faced by persons with disability in exercising the rights for the purpose of formulating and implementing policies to give effect to the Convention. So, it's a reference 2008 National and Housing Census, right? Sure. Page 203, all the way to. National Health mm -hmm. yeah. Say that again. Yeah. Take note. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. National Health Census. National Housing Census. Mm -hmm. So we can do Article what? Article 32, right? Yeah. International Cooperation. So this is very important, especially for our international partners, right? That will be there, yeah. 232. Measures adopted to ensure that policy and programs to implement the SDG, SDGs are grounded on human rights based approach to disability. So here we say a number of policies and programs are in place for the implementation of the SDGs on the human rights based approach in project directed to PWD development by effort of the international, international cooperation, which civil society organizations across the country remain involved with. Monitoring the accountability framework to assess the impact on PWD of international cooperation programs, projects, and policy are carried through appropriate monitoring to enforce by follow-ups and review process. 233, step taken to ensure the mainstreaming of disability in programs and projects, develop international cooperation efforts, and extend to which they are gender and age sensitive. So our response is, Italian Association, let me see the something, AI, Afro, let me call it Afro, I can call it that. Yeah, is a we got the Italian people. Apple, Handicap International, Leona Chelsea Foundation, the Carter Center UC, and the World Bank have implemented programs catering to PWDs in Liberia in partnership with NCD, NNUOD. That's the organization, right? So come to 235. Hmm? Measures adopted to guarantee the international cooperation, including international development cooperation, cooperation in Latina in Europe, is inclusive okay, and accessible to persons with disability and is fully in line with human rights based approach to disability. Uh, 235. The government, through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Finance, and development plan has established a department, International Cooperation Regional Integration, to address the issue of regional and international cooperation development, such as the Manor River Union, ECOWAS, AU, and the UN, which is inclusive and accessible to PWDs. 
Mm -hmm. Now, for example, yeah. let, me, let me just throw that uh, Yeah, please throw that uh, What we are seeing here is that uh, for, for every matter that is for PWDs, when it gets to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it goes down straight and goes to the director responsible, I mean, NCD. So she just immediately said, I know what to do. So we're not, we're not taking from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and sending it everywhere. So it's a cooperation matter. So it's directly to there. If it is for gender, we send it to gender, then gender will be able to uh, collaborate with NCD. So that's the chain. So we don't, we don't do things to overlap function or try to misdirect communication where it's supposed to go and then we take it we send it to Bokon Jira to some, somebody else because we want to be personal. No. That's a cooperation matter we are talking about. Yeah. Um, good good time for that clarification. Yeah. Number nine. Two thirty six. Measures adopted to ensure the meaningful participation of persons with disability through their representative organizations in the design, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of programs and projects developed in international cooperation effort at local, national, regional, and global level. So that's 326. The NCD monitors and NCD monitors and supervises projects and programs of international partners developed for the improvement of the lives of PWDs. So you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two, three, seven. Actions towards facilitating and supporting capacity building relating to international cooperation and disability, including through the exchange and sharing of information experiences, information experiences, training programs, and the best practices with involvement and participation representative organization of persons with disability. So, we said due to economic constraints, budgetary allotments are not forthcoming. For the participation of the NCD in international conferences. Participate. To participate in international conferences. You can put participation in the international conferences. However, support for professional organization membership, such as the International Society for what? Prostasis. Prostasis. And what? Prostasis. Federation African. Something FBTO Fatu are not budget are not budgeted, right? Yeah. Mm? A French warrior, right? Yeah. Those are French words. Forget the Liberal Amino Society also participate in the national conferences. Mm. So we come to three two eight. We will not get anything for that. We will skip two three. So we get two three nine. Yeah. Measures adopted to enhance capacity building support to developing countries, including for least developed countries and small island developing states, to increase significantly the availability of high quality, timely, reliable data disaggregated by income, gender, age, gender, age, gender, age, race, ethnicity, Migratory status, disability, geographic location, other characteristics, relevant national context. So that was three, two, three, nine, right? Yeah. yeah. We now say training programs to build the capacity of PWDs and technicians in data collection support from UNICEF. I think we should reference. Yeah, reference yeah. this, right? So we say. Reference, right? You're not. Cat Share Foundation supported a research project on effective poverty reduction for persons with disability in Liberia in 2014. The Cat Center support, supports the management of rights of persons with, of person with psychosocial disability, and the World Bank has conducted study of disability in post conflict countries, including Liberia and Africa at large. Now, come to what seems to be the last. National implementation and monitoring is also a very important part. 240. Measures adapted to designate 
one or more focal points properly placed within government structure and with sufficient authority for ensuring that disability is mainstream across all policies and programs which ministry has been appointed as a focal point. A 240 right? The government of Liberia has established appropriate institutions, Minister of General, Children's Social Protection, Minister of Education, Special and Inclusive Education Division, and the National Commission on Disability, whose functions cover all disability related affairs. These other situations are the focal points for all disability issues in Liberia, including accreditation of disability institutions, their proper management, operations, and even closure when necessary. They seek after the educational and social protection of PWDs. These institutions also ensure that addressing disability challenges are mainstream into policy across government operations and activities, and including national budgeting process. The Minister of Justice, as co-chair of the steering committee, or the National Human Rights Action Plan Republic of Liberia plays a significant coordination role on the implementation of the human rights based approach to disability among various land ministries and agencies. Establishment or designation of a coordination mechanism within the government structure to facilitate related action in different sectors at different levels, which the Ministry of the with our department take, taking part in the coordination mechanism. Let me read that again. Measures adopted to give due consideration to the establishment or designation of a coordination mechanism within the government structure to facilitate related action in different sectors and at different levels. Which ministry or the department taking part in the coordination mechanism? That's a question. So two for the one of the here. The government library established a coordination mechanism through a resolution adopted in um, adopted April 28, 2018, to ensure that the library prepares and within the government and within the government comprising the Minister of General, NCD, and the Minister of Justice, Human Rights Division. Consistent with its enabling legislation, the Independent National Commission on Human Rights is part of the responsibility to independently promote and protect the rights of all persons with disability, all persons with persons with disability in Liberia. Additionally, a network comprising of government ministries and agencies, service providers, and DPOs has been set up to monitor the implementation of the convention and other policies and legislation to affect the lives of to affect the lives of PWDs. Two for the one. So we escape the other one. Two for the two, two for the three. So we jump the challenges, right? I think we're almost done, right? Challenges. Challenges to the effective protection and promotion fulfillment of the rights of persons with disabilities recognized in the convention includes discrimination. 81. Discrimination and inaccessibility to information and the environment are the overarching challenges that hinder the effective promotion, protection, and fulfillment of the rights of persons with disability. Example, employment sector, healthcare system, and housing still remain a challenge. 82. Persons with disability ineffective and unreliable data collection system, which makes it difficult to ascertain the number of persons with disability and to conduct knee assessment to ensure that all PWDs are captured for the benefit, for the benefit and rights they are entitled to. In the three, although the country has laws of general application on which the rights of PWD can be protected, promoted, and fulfilled. There are few laws, policies, and mechanisms to directly address issues affecting persons with disability, impacts on the effective protection, promotion, and fulfillment of rights of persons with disability as recognized under the UN Convention on Rights of Persons with Disability. 84. 
Trust me, disability do not enjoy equal opportunity in political representation and decision making positions. The government of Liberia has made significant progress in furtherance of the protection, promotion, fulfillment of the rights of persons with disability as recognized in the Convention through laws and legal reform, institutional and structural arrangement, as well as policy and strategies. The establishment of NCD in 2005 is an achievement to the country. In collaboration with AIFO Liberia, the NCD launched the Community Based Rehabilitation Hub for PWD, which has and continues to, and continue to provide much needed services to PWDs. The Ministry of Health also provides mental health services for rehabilitation. And when we have the and rehabilitation, including mental illness, mental disability, and physical rehabilitation, while the Ministry of Gender, Social, and Children and Social Protection addresses the physical need. It is setting significant progress. So, right under the, uh, so, uh, excuse me, mm -hmm. launch a uh, community based rehabilitation program. So, program should be after the CDR. Program, right? Yeah. Just take note. Mm -hmm. So, it is seven. What we should do was significant work to measure. Significant progress being made through government interventions <laughs> in the area of right to health, right to life, equality before the law, access to justice, oh, sorry, access to justice, and enjoyment of liberty and security of PWD, including. In particular, freedom from exploitation and abuse. Progress has also been made, has also been noted in the area of education, accessibility for persons for personal mobility, acquisition of advocacy skills for PWDs to advocate for the rights and the voice of their needs. I would add. They would say, idiot, the establishment of the National Human Rights Action Plan of Liberia, NARA, which ensure the rights of all persons, including persons with disability, are respected. Recommendation. Hmm. The recommendation. Liberia should develop a mechanism for data collection of all persons with disability to ensure that they are included in all national activities and participate in vital decision making processes like the Constitution Review Committee. The country should support more awareness raising programs at the national local level, such as conducting activities in local dialects or local languages, well, the dialect and local languages in all 15 counties on the rights of persons with disability. This way, educate both stakeholders, duty bearers, and right holders, that PWDs are not a burden on society, rather part and contributors. Number one, PWDs activities are mostly funded by international partners. Hence, the state should allocate adequate funds to provide for the physical, material, medical, and social psychosocial needs to those institutions responsible for the provisions of these services. So the so the analysis to this document, which includes no applicable supplies of these articles and paragraphs do not directly suit PWD in Liberia. However, they will be they will be maintained and they may be at the indeed in the subsequent report. So this is the the achievement and recommendation, so we'll open the floor. For achievement, we'll open the floor, maybe the other. So at this stage, you can see all protocol is there. Because I don't want to start calling names and forget some of the name. Uh, on behalf of the steering committee uh, of NARA, I want to say uh, thank you for coming to this validation workshop. Uh, with your support, we think we have done well with this report. And we, we want to say thank you to all of our international partners, um, to the OCHA, UNDP, 
Um, we also want to say thank you to the Federal Land Ministries and Agencies who have also helped us in promoting this report. I can tell you for a fact, if you were not involved in, uh, initially in, this, in, the, in, the, in the formulation of this report, we wouldn't have done anything with this validation. So indeed, we have done well. We also want to tell, uh, say thank you to the, to the, to the committee, uh, the technical committee that uh, have been working on this report. We want to say thank you, uh, most especially to Cyrus and his team for supporting us, for making sure in designating the, the, the appropriate focal persons that we needed to aid us in making this report a success. Um, we want to pay special recognition here of Mr. Divan Takatopa, who is not present, the Director for Human Rights and the Ministry of Justice. He has played a pivotal role in making sure this report has reached where it is. So even though he is not here, but we want to make sure we recognize uh, his contribution to this report. To so all of us, Mr. Dennis, you have done well. Through the rain, through the sunshine, you are knocking on, on, on our doors to make sure we, we, we make this report a success. General Minister who recognize you. You are winning. Sorry, uh, we didn't mention, but we, we, we are not forgotten. You are, we are winning is one of our strong partners. They support us, I mean, they support us uh, uh, from the initial stage in Buchanan and in Banga. And during the committee report, uh, the, the technical committee report, they also supported us. So we don't want to forget you and, uh, you and women. They are very special to us. So we want to say thank you, and this will not be the end. What we're going to do here is, after this validation, we're going to uh, clean up again this, this report, and we'll share with you so that you can know where we are and any other input. We, don't, we are not going to alter anything. What all of the recommendations, all of the input, all of the comments that you made, we're going to insert them and send them back to you so that you can know indeed that what we what you have uh, commented on are mentioned in there. So thank you and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much.